Lord Jesus, you are the king over all kings, the Lord over all lords, and you hold the universe in the palm of your hand, and you hold us. We thank you that we are in your firm grip as those loved by you, a love that can never fail, given by one whose promises never fail. You truly are our hope and our anchor. We praise you for your great love for the unlovely. It's in your name we pray. Amen. We're going to take a few moments this morning, as we do every week, and remember the Lord's death. And so we're going to turn to a Bible passage this morning. If you don't have a Bible, uh, we'd love to put one in your hands. Just slip your hand up and let the men know that you'd like to have a copy of God's Word, and they'll put one in your hands this morning. I'd love for us to turn our attention to Matthew chapter 27 to help us think about the Lord's death. Matthew chapter 27. Here we are invited to look in on the greatest travesty of justice the world has known. Matthew writes, beginning in verse 27, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole Roman cohort around him. They stripped him. They put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they knelt down before him and they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him, took the reed and began to beat him on the head. After they had mocked him, they took the scarlet robe off him and put his own garments back on and led him away to crucify him. What a remarkable scene this is. The audacity of man is on display and the patience of Christ is on display. Certainly the purposes of God are on display. This one hanging on a cross, this one beaten and mocked by Roman soldiers was none other than the second person of the Trinity. God the Son, fully God and fully man. As the word of God, he is the one who upholds all things by the word of his power. And yes, he was upholding these very men who mocked him. His hands grew the branches on which the thorns grew. It was his wisdom and power that produced the reed and the materials for the garments they placed on him. It was his very power that spoke into existence these soldiers and sustained their existence while they beat him, spit on him, and mocked him. Why was he like a sheep before the slaughter? Why was he silent before his shearers? Why did he utter no protest? Because this is exactly what he came to do. Jesus came to lay down his life as a ransom for many. He came to die. He came to die as a substitute sacrifice in the place of sinners. Sinners like these soldiers. Sinners like you and me. Jesus did not suffer these things. Jesus did not go to the cross and suffer more pain, more shame, and of course the infinite wrath of his Father. He did not suffer these things because we were inherently beautiful or worth saving. He desired to love the unlovely. He desired to save the undeserving. He desired to rescue Sinners. The infinite cost of his sacrifice was due to the infinite wrath poured out against sin. 
which was directly related to the infinite justice that had been offended. Only Jesus could take this wrath in the place of sinners like us. And so Jesus came willingly to be mocked, to be beaten, to be killed by men and to be crushed by his father. Now, this awful travesty of justice is actually what upholds God's justice, that God can be just and that sin gets fully punished and the sinner go free. The substitute in our place takes our punishment and we get life. For you who are here this morning and love the Lord Jesus Christ, you have embraced him as Lord and Savior. Friend, your sins are forgiven once and for all by this finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. In a few moments, we'll have an opportunity for some silent reflection. That's an opportunity for you to examine your own heart, to confess any known sin, uh, to make plans for repentance, and to rejoice in the forgiveness that Jesus has purchased. And if you're here this morning and you have not yet embraced Jesus, you have not yet surrendered your life to him, You are not yet forgiven of your sins. You must know that you, like these soldiers in Matthew 27, will see Jesus. And with your sins uncovered, you will only face the unflinching wrath of God. So the invitation before you now is to come to Christ. Have life and forgiveness. Embrace him and you get everything. If you have not embraced Jesus Christ, this memorial, the eating of bread and drinking of grape juice, this memorial of his body crushed and his blood spilt is not for you. But if you will embrace Jesus as Savior, then it is for you to remember what Jesus has done for sinners like us. The men are going to come now and serve us. Uh, Hold those elements for a few moments as you Reflect and thank God and examine your heart. And when you are prepared, take those and I'll close us in prayer.